Hi everyone, as you may know, DaVinci Resolve 19 beta version was released last week and it came with brand new awesome features that are very useful. In my previous video, I briefly mentioned the Filmloop Creator tool and today I want to take a detailed look at it with you. So this tool is designed as a single effect where you can do all your color and effect adjustments. Instead of dealing with multiple nodes or creating a new look for your project every time, you can just directly use this and get really great results. It's very easy to apply. Let's just search for it in the effects library and add that to a node. You will notice the difference right away, even from the moment we add it. At the top of the menu, there are presets we can choose from. We initially see the 65mm default look. From here, we can select the 35mm look. And when we choose cinematic, cinematic bars are added like this. If you want to use this, you can readjust the frame using the sizing tool. There is also a bleach bypass look, which isn't really my favorite, but I absolutely love the nostalgic preset. The colors become softer and more vintage, and at the same time, a cinematic border is added like this. I definitely plan to use this in a project in the future. Okay, let's continue. So we have the option of default no effects. This eliminates all effects as the name indicates. If we toggle the effect on and off, you will see that the colors are still there. Lastly, there is the custom option. By selecting this, you can adjust everything from the scratch. Let's proceed with the default 65mm option. Just below that, there are color blend and effect blend options. You can use this to determine how strong the effect should be. Okay. Moving on, they have also added a color space override settings. If you know the exact color space and gamma settings for your footage, you can use them directly here. I don't have the information about this footage, so I won't make any changes here. Right below that, you will see your color adjustments. Actually, let me close this window first so we can see everything. As you can see, there are many color adjustments and effects you can use here. Let's take a look at the color adjustments now. You can adjust your exposure and contrast settings from here. I think they already give quite good results. You have the option to adjust your highlights from here. Uh, let's play with that a little bit. You can use fade to brighten up the shadow areas. I won't increase it too much. Let's leave it here. I think it looks good. So white balance in this tool uses chromatic adaptation, which I've talked about in some of my previous videos. It's easier to achieve an accurate white balance. Let's adjust the tint a little bit too. They've added a setting called skin bias, which affects skin tones. If you look at the model's face, you will see that it slightly adjusts the tone. Let's leave it around here. So subtractive saturation is another good way to increase saturation of the footage without affecting the exposure levels. As a result, this helps in achieving a more cinematic look. Richness is affects the vibrance of the image. Let's see what we have done so far. This is before, this is after. Perfect. Even in this state, it looks really good. Let's continue. They've added a new setting called Split Tone. Let's activate it. This effect adds warm tones to highlights and cool tones to shadow areas. You can decide the amount here. You can also pull different color tones with hue angle. With Pivot, you can determine how much each area, shadow or highlight, will be affected. This is before and this is after. Actually, let me just readjust the white balance. In fact, I want to add a new node before this. I will increase the shadows a bit. This is before, this is after. I think it's not bad at all. Okay, after split tone, you can adjust your effects. Let me open the menus for you to see. By default, all effects are enabled. You can just remove any effect that you don't want. Let's turn off flicker. I will also disable gate weave. Film gate is one of my favorite features. I really like seeing the footage in different aspect ratios like this. There are presets available again. You can choose the one you want and adjust it. Let's leave it at 35 mm for now. Now let's look at the grain feature. I will select 35 mm. I want to show it up close like this. If you toggle it off and on, we will see the difference. I think it looks quite natural and cinematic. With the settings below, you can achieve exactly what you want. Let's check bloom. It's not very noticeable in this image since there aren't many bright areas, but it's there. So let's continue with halation. 
it already presents in the footage. When I increase the amount, it adds a bit of blur as well. If you look at the eyes, you will see it around the edges. I think it works quite well, but it's better not to use it in very high amounts. You can also increase the amount and adjust the size of vignette from here. Okay, it looks great and we have achieved it very easily. We started here and we have come this far. All right, that's it for today's video, guys. I think it's a fantastic addition. It's quite sufficient for beginners, but unfortunately, this tool is not available in the free version. You will need the studio version to use this. So if you have any questions about this tool or any other topic, please leave them in the comments. If you would like to support me, you can subscribe to my channel. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.